This video is going to be about our porosity and permeability lab that we did quite a while ago. So this is a good review. All right, definitions. Porosity is how much pore space is found in a type of sediment. All right, so uh, it, we talked about it as a percent of pore space. All right, so pore space might look something like this, where you can see around those sediment particles, there are some spaces, okay, and those spaces can either be filled with air or water. So that's what the blue is the pore space, right? So porosity is percent pore space. Permeability is how fast water can flow through a sediment layer. And both of these factors, porosity and permeability, are going to determine how quickly an aquifer can be recharged or filled with, refilled with water. So here we have a landscape um, showing the dark gray is the groundwater. Okay, you can see the water table right here. It's even with the lake. And you can see some precipitation happening. And I highlighted the word recharge because that means that the water is going back into the ground, into the groundwater. So how porous and how permeable this aquifer is is going to determine how fast the uh, water table can be or how fast the ground water can be recharged. Okay? How, how fast that aquifer can be refilled, let's say. All right, so we had a setup in lab that looked something like this, where we had some different graduated cylinders, and we filled each graduated cylinder with a different sediment, uh, but we filled them with 50 milliliters, okay? So we put 50 milliliters of fine sediment into one, and some 50 milliliters of gravel into the other. Then we wanted to fill uh, each graduated cylinder with 50 milliliters of water. So when we did that, we found that um, the fine sand, water plus the sediment, was about 80 milliliters. Okay, so our fine sand, the final level was 80. That meant that about 20 milliliters was air space. So in this sand, there was 20 milliliters of air in there. And when we actually filled this graduated cylinder with water, um, we noticed that there was lots of bubbling. Lots of bubbles were coming out of the sand. The uh, pores were letting their air out and filling with water. Okay, and so we are going to say that this sample, the fine sand, had a high porosity. Okay, high porosity. Now, when we did the same thing with the gravel, the water plus the sediment, 50 mils of water plus 50 mils of sediment, was 90, all right? So that tells us that uh, only 10 milliliters was air. So these large gravel pieces have a low porosity compared to the sand, okay? So sand is high porosity, and the gravel was a low porosity. So the conclusion to our lab, the smaller the particle size, the greater the porosity. Fine sand had a high porosity and gravel had a low porosity. All right, and then we did the permeability lab. Permeability lab looked something like this where we had uh, 300 milliliters of sand and we poured 300 milliliters of water in through this sand and we had a sieve uh, in the bottom and we caught the water as it went down here and we were going to time it. So we timed how long it took for the 300 mils of water to go down into the beaker and we did that both with gravel, um, actually we did it with gravel, fine sand, and a mixed sand. 
right? And what we found was that our gravel, uh, the water just poured through it really quickly. It took about a second. And the fine sand took somewhere around a minute for all 300 mils of water to go through. And the mixed sand took a really long time. In fact, some of us didn't even finish timing. It was three minutes or more. And the water was still trying to get through um, all of that mixed sand. So our conclusion for the permeability lab was that our smaller particle size had a lower permeability. Water didn't flow through it very fast with the fine sand. The larger particle size, like the gravel, had a high permeability. The water flowed really quickly through that gravel. And so we said as particle size increases, permeability will also increase. Okay, the water can flow through faster pieces, or I'm sorry, the, the water can flow through the large gravel quickly. As particle size increases, um, again, water flows through that sample quicker. All right, so let's look at some diagrams that I've got here. So this would be a diagram showing, notice that all the pore spaces are connected. All of that blue is connected. So that would be a very um, highly permeable substance. This right here has no pore spaces to show, and so that's an impermeable substance. So this has, um, this has high porosity, high permeability. This has low porosity, and uh, nothing can pass through it. There's no water passing through it, so that looks to be impermeable. Here's another sample. So is this permeable or impermeable? Look closely at the diagram, and if you look at the pore spaces, so there's high porosity here. There are pores, but none of them are connected. So that means it's a low permeability. All right. So another diagram that I might show you is something like this. Again, we've got a lot of permeability here. The water can freely flow around all of these particles. This is more of a mixed sediment where we have some big pieces and little pieces. And because those little pieces are kind of clogging up some of those pores, water can't easily flow. So this is the reason why our mixed sand took so long. Um, I have one more diagram that I wanted to show you. So this is just showing you how this arrow here, you got a lot of free-flowing water. So lots of water can flow there. That's very permeable. Um, so flowing through the pore spaces means that it's permeable. Now, I've got three glasses here with different substances in them. The one on the left is flour, the middle one is sugar, and the far right one is gravel. And I just want to show you, I'm not going to measure the water, but I'm just going to pour water in here and see what happens to see how permeable this is. So I'm using colored water. Okay, so you can see that the, um, the flour is not very permeable. The sugar was pretty permeable. The gravel, if you caught it, was when, you know, it permeated the fastest. So really, um, lots of permeability here. If we could have timed it, maybe uh, we, you would have seen that this one had medium permeability and this one is very, very impermeable. The nature of those flower particles is making it so that, um, I mean, those pore spaces are so interconnected with each other that that flower is not very permeable. So this might be something like clay. All right, so that is the end of our permeability and porosity lab. 
review. And remember, porosity and permeability will determine how quickly an aquifer can be recharged or filled with water. It also determines how fast water can flow through this aquifer.